Thanks a lot. Um, I'm thrilled to be here uh, at NASCOM, and it's always uh, a treat uh, to come back to India and to my hometown. Uh, okay, before uh, I begin, uh, can I get a quick show of hands, uh, just so I know who's in the audience? How many of you uh, work in retail, online, offline? Cool. How many of you in, are in startups doing stuff that's related to retail? Okay. Cool. Great. Uh, so over the next 15 minutes, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, walk through some examples of how we are using uh, big data to drive and transform retail. Uh, along the way, we'll take a, make a small segue in, uh, to talk about my personal journey from startups to big companies now to, to Walmart Labs, and uh, we'll do a deep dive into uh, some examples starting, starting with this one. So let's take this innocuous looking shopping bag with uh, hopefully a slightly humorous text. Uh, it has a number of product attributes, right? So it has a product type, brand, gender, pattern, and so on. Uh, if one of the things we need to do when you're selling any of these products online is you need a title, you need uh, for the products to be able to uh, be findable. So how would you come up with a title for such a product? Uh, the simplest approach would be to maybe concatenate a few of the attributes. Maybe you take the product type, brand, uh, color, and concatenate it. And that would be one way of doing it. But that would miss the opportunity to interact with the customer in a much richer way than you could otherwise. So this is an example of the kind of problem we are thinking about and are actively working on right now. So what if you could change the title or customize the title on a per user basis based on the intent behind the search query that the user enters? So for example, let's say a user enters uh, on sale canvas tote bag. More likely than not, the user knows what they're looking for and they're ready to buy this product if the price is right. right? So in which case the title could be Blah, right? So it's, you don't have to spend too much effort trying to figure out what exactly you need. You could say natural canvas tote. If the price is right, you know you're going to get the user. Let's look at something that becomes a little more interesting. What if the user says, hey, I want a comfortable tote bag, but I want something a little edgy, something that's a little funny. Uh, in this case, the user is probably exploring specific types of products. They know the kind of product they want but they're exploring. They, they haven't made up their mind about the specific product. In which case, maybe you take a few of the interesting, more interesting attributes to then create a title that would be a lot more engaging for the user. Uh, and similarly, if someone's looking for an eco-friendly shopping bag, they're maybe just in a browse mode. They're trying to f discover new products. And in that case, you uh, know that eco-friendly uh, equates to natural canvas, and that's something that's going to catch the user's eye when you, you, they look at the search results. So this is, again, an example of how you can use data and rich product information combined with analytics to make the user engagement a lot more interesting and deeper than you would otherwise. And as we look at what we're doing at Walmart, uh, we have our customers are now interacting with us in many, many different ways. Smartphones, tablets, computers, home delivery, pickup, you name it. Uh, and all kinds of devices, right, from uh, smartphones to tablets to traditional computers to kiosks, uh, pick, pick up groceries online, uh, order online, pick up offline, and so on. So we are using a lot of the rich data uh, to enable much more interesting uh, interactions, but more interestingly, we are doing it at massive, massive scale. When you think about, if you drive down on Highway 101 in uh, the Bay Area, you will see a billboard that says, we are changing the way people shop one billion at a time. Uh, there aren't very many places where you can do that. Uh, so we, uh, we, are, we are in a very interesting place where we are dealing with some massive uh, scale, at, and we're doing this not just for that many uh, users, but for millions of products, tens of millions to hundreds of millions of products. And so this is an interesting big data issue. Uh, how do you use big data 
to create much more interesting interactions at this kind of scale. So this is a big data track, so we need some big numbers, right? So uh, we are at the intersection of physical and digital. Uh, retail is inherently omnichannel right now. There isn't a notion of offline, online, and so on. It is all of these different channels are uh, really combined together. Uh, we have about 11,000 stores in 27 countries, 100 plus square kilometers of uh, retail space, uh, 245 million customers coming through any of our stores on, uh, in any given week. And on the global e-commerce, uh, and we have over 10 e-commerce websites uh, in many different countries. Uh, this year, we are on track to do about $13.5 billion in uh, gross merchandise volume. And not surprisingly, we have petabyte scale data. Uh, and uh, at least with uh, Walmart Labs, we have dev centers. Uh, in the US, we are based in the San Francisco Bay Area, headquarters there, but uh, we have dev centers in Brazil, in China, and of course, uh, here in Bangalore. Some of the uh, interesting applications uh, we are building uh, that get to the intersection of the physical and digital. We have a number of different applications, and this is just a very small representative sample. Uh, for example, Click and Collect, which is the uh, application we built in, uh, for uh, Asda uh, groceries in the UK, uh, where you can order groceries online, pick it up at store or at the London Tube. Uh, prescription refills, both of which, by the way, were built by teams here in Bangalore. So a huge shout out to those teams here. Uh, Savings Catcher is a hugely uh, popular program. Uh, Insta Watch is uh, a lot of fun. You can buy a DVD in a Walmart store and watch it instantly on Voodoo, which is one of our uh, startups within Walmart, uh, and so on. So each one of these is blending uh, not just the physical and digital, but all of this is really enabled by how you use data across these different systems, the kinds of analytics you run, and what you enable. Okay, so uh, just a quick step back uh, to talk about uh, how I ended up where uh, I am right now. Uh, started a long time back at, uh, at Sybase, and I've done and then did a number of startups. Uh, some great, some not so great, some successful, some not so successful. And as you heard this morning, you learn the most from the ones that fail. And that's true for me as well. Uh, uh, every single lesson from the failed startups is, uh, is worth its weight in gold. Uh, I, I ran architecture at eBay, uh, ran risk technology at PayPal. Uh, I was at Zynga running revenue and payments there. And I was the co-founder and CTO at Inkiru, a predictive analytics startup and at Walmart Labs. So uh, why Walmart Labs? Uh, it is scale, we've talked about the scale. It's an, also an extremely startup friendly place. Uh, we've made a number of acquisitions over the years uh, and uh, we've brought in a lot of great talent uh, into, the, into the company as a result. So I just noticed that there isn't a company, uh, a startup from India, we need to fix that. Uh, so uh, I think I'll still talk about real-time uh, predictive analytics quite a bit, so I won't belabor that. Uh, so Inkeru was a real-time predictive analytics platform. Uh, the idea with predictive analytics is to really go from reporting, which tells you what happened, to analytics, which may tell you why it happened. These are offline, uh, mostly offline, to really predicting what will happen. Right. So you look at historic data, you look at real-time signals as a user is interacting with you. Uh, with, you, with your mobile app, with your web, web application, and combine that with statistical probabilistic models, machine learning models, uh, and all of it based on a really good real-time infrastructure. So that's what makes uh, predictive really work. So some of the uh, use cases that we uh, built uh, for various customers prior to the acquisition, an online shoe retailer where, uh, based on really sparse information, we would predict in real time the kinds of shoes that uh, uh, the young women that this uh, company was going after would, would want to buy. So based on very different signals, and we would send the recommendations in real time. Uh, well, you can send recommendations about shoes or whatever it is if you have an, the, a really wide assortment. You need to have products to send to. 
Uh, and that's where uh, the uh, number of interesting problems we are solving. Uh, over the years, we've tripled the size of our, so our assortment uh, in, in the US, in Brazil, it's gone 10x. Uh, in China, uh, in EHDN, a Chinese uh, subsidiary, it's doubled. And some of the uh, questions we ask and, and that we use analytics and predictive analytics for is, which products do you carry? Which signals do you use to predict which products to carry, where you carry it from, uh, and can we do it for the scale that we are operating at? Um, similarly, for inventory, uh, forecasting. We did this for a flash sale site where we were able to predict the uh, down to a skew uh, the number of uh, items they would sell uh, within the first few hours of a three-day flash sale, even before the sale ended. Uh, and inventory again leads into uh, a supply chain and logistics uh, use case where uh, it's all about data, right? So you figure out, uh, for example, when you think about the difference between shipping to a store versus what happens in online commerce, where let's say you're buying a bottle of water uh, online, you don't ship one bottle of water from your supplier to your stores, you ship pallets. But when you're buying online, you're, ship you're really buying one product at a time. That has very interesting implications for how you stock in your distribution centers. When do you replenish? Uh, how do you figure out and forecast your inventory? All of these are interesting big data problems. One of the more interesting problems uh, with uh, big data is uh, predicting fraud in real time. Uh, online fraud is a, is a huge issue. Uh, and here you're really looking at all of the signals and saying, can I in real time uh, predict the likelihood of a transaction being good or bad. Uh, and that's a classic uh, big, big, big data problem that we've, uh, an analytics problem that we've solved uh, with uh, pr predictive analytics. So very quickly, uh, lessons learned. Uh, I distilled it into three basic things. One is really the culture of the mindset. And I make a difference uh, between being data informed versus data driven. Uh, too often we think that data is the be all end all where we are become slaves to data. And my, uh, my uh, feedback to you and advice to you is for any of the problems, whether it's in retail or any of the problems you're solving, there is an art and a science to it. So uh, don't forget the art part. So uh, my take is organizations are better off being data informed as opposed to being slaves to the data. Uh, we, we combine engineering and data scientists, amazing engineers and data scientists make incredibly amazing things happen. So uh, we've done that many, many times, both at Inkiru uh, and uh, at Walmart Labs. And all of this isn't gonna be possible if you don't invest in a world-class data infrastructure. So with that, uh, in conclusion, I know we zipped through a number of different use cases. Uh, but the key takeaway for, for, uh, that I want to leave all of you with is we are using uh, big data analytics to drive retail. There are a number of use cases that are in play right now and are being used effectively. But uh, I think we're just scratching the surface. So when it comes to big data and retail, I'll posit that the best is still to come. Thanks. Great.